Welcome to the weekly mixtape for the RLS Wealth Rundown. It is May 1st when you are seeing this. I'm actually recording it on the 30th. Hard to believe that we're already into the month of May. Exciting month for those of us here in Indiana. Obviously, we have the Indianapolis 500 at the end of the month, but we also have VCon coming up in a few weeks. That's Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, co conference get together that'll be down at Lucas Oil and surrounding areas. I'm actually going to be down there for that Thursday, Friday, doing some work, seeing if there's anybody there that I know, and just working from that uh, exciting environment. That energy will be really fun, and there are some speakers I want to hear speak. So if you're going to be in and around Indianapolis for VCon, let me know. Uh, I know that some of you are not Arlo's both clients, seeing this on the YouTube channel. So let me know if you're going to be in town. We'd love to meet up um, and just have a conversation and, and, and say hello. So with that, let's get to the headlines that may or may not be impacting your financial plan and portfolio. And as I look at my notebook, only a few things to go over as I was looking over the week and the headlines I thought were worth covering. Uh, the first one you know, really was breaking uh, over the weekend. There was some news going in on Friday, uh, but it looks like First Republic is not going to make it out on the other side of the banking issue we had that started a few weeks ago with Silicon Valley uh, going under. It, it looks as if, um, I'm pretty sure I haven't checked today, but it looked like uh, First Republic was going to be going into receivership of FDIC over the weekend. And banks like JP Morgan and PNC were going to be bidding to take over the assets of the bank and take over the bank. So another bank doesn't make it. Um, you're know, stemming out from everything that started out in Silicon Valley with the bank out there. And First Republic got pulled in with it. And again, one of these situations where we learn more about how banking works, there's over $100 billion, make sure I got that right, $100 billion taken out of First Republic over that time period where there was the bank run and the scare that went on. Hard to recover from that with, we know how now banks take our money and put it into treasuries and other things. When you have those redemptions and you have to sell, it makes it really hard. First Republic had received some injections of capital to try to help them survive, but they just weren't able to make it. So um, First Republic will no longer be around uh, and it'll be going to someone like JP Morgan or PNC. Uh, so the big banks continue to get bigger. That's disappointing to see because First Republic, all by all accounts, is a great bank. Um, obviously didn't necessarily do everything right on the back end of things, but customer service, really well known, friendly to businesses. So it's a bummer to see a bank like that go away because um, we know that JP Morgan is not going to be the same type of bank as First Republic was. So that was the first headline just because it's the most recent and it went out over the weekend. Um, next up, some economic data that spills into the upcoming week because the Federal Reserve is going to be meeting this week uh, to do their meeting and their notes and we'll see what they do as far as raising interest rates. Uh, but wage growth continued to be strong. So still growing a little bit slower weight at a little bit slower rate, but still growing. And one of the metrics that the Fed is paying attention to is wage growth because with wage growth, these increased prices with inflation, people can stomach. Uh, you really start to see the pain when the price of living and the price of expense of, of goods becomes so much more expensive and wages don't grow that that gap begins. But if they are continuing to go lock and key or step and step, it's a little bit easier, although we might not like it, to pay those higher prices and get by because our wages are going up. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see how that plays into things, what they say about that. You have the wage growth being strong, you have inflation numbers coming down, you have the stock market kind of being okay. Um, so we'll see what happens this week as the Fed comes, but that was um, one of the economic data points I wanted to pick up. Uh, the other one I want to mention, we talked about this a few weeks ago, and then it became uh, you know in the talk, in the news, maybe a week after I brought it up first time. Not that I was the first to talk about it, but uh, it got picked up more by the news headlines after we talked about it. But the debt ceiling, is good. we're getting closer to that time period. It's gonna become more and more a piece of conversation. Um, Republicans recently passed a proposal to raise the limit to $31.4 trillion, uh, but President Biden has said that he does not wanna have any conversations about raising the debt ceiling. Obviously, if we default on our debt, there is a global impact from that. Um, hist history has shown us that last minute they'll come up with some type of agreement to raise the debt ceiling or, or to do something to make uh, it not as severe. Right now they've been doing some clever accounting which just kind of shows you how um, numbers can be manipulated to fit things if need be to keep things going but we're gonna have to have a conversation about this seriously in the not too far distant future and uh, right now it looks like there'll be initial talks will be kind of butting heads as the two parties like to do before we come up with something. But debt ceiling topic will be coming up. There are a lot of what if scenarios that can come from that. That could be very scary. That could be reasons you might want to do something crazy with your money or do with your portfolio. 
Um, chances are those scenarios don't play out and usually those most extreme scenarios, if they were to play out, whatever alternative you think you might have is probably not going to matter in that situation if we have a global uh, shutdown of economies and markets. It doesn't really matter what you did with your money because everything has, has failed and it's not the same situation. We're all back to bartering and you know, land and canned food and those types of things are, are now our currency. I don't think that's the scenario that we see play out, but you never know. But again, usually those extreme scenarios and also the most optimistic scenarios are really the outliers. The truth lays somewhere in the middle. So maybe we have some back and forth. Maybe we have some market turbulation because of that. Maybe there is a little bit of government shutdown in some areas before they finalize everything and then things pick back up and we move forward. So obviously the debt ceiling is something that is important and really we need to figure out because $31 trillion as a limit is, is pretty insane. Um, it gets to the point where I kind of think about is there even that much money uh, and is it all just fake. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to be a headline that's going to come up. You're going to hear a lot about it. So just wanted to give, kind of give you a heads up and then remind you that these things will work themselves out. Um, this upcoming week, a couple big you know, newsworthy things that we know are, are on the, the calendar. First off, the Fed meeting. So Fed's gonna have their meeting, come out of that, hopefully they'll pause, but we'll see if they pause or if they raise 25 basis points, 0.25%. Uh, so that's gonna be a big one. And the other one is Apple reports its earnings. Right now, there's been a lot of good numbers coming out and good stock uh, reaction in the big growth tech areas, Microsoft and Google, um, I think Amazon actually did okay as well. So we're seeing some of the big high growth names in the tech area do pretty well. Apple comes up and Apple fits into that as also uh, in, into that category. So can we see that continue to go? But Apple is a really important stock because it makes up a, a lot of the, the index. It's a big part of pretty much everybody's portfolio because as far as an individual holding because it's pretty much in most uh, US stock funds. So everybody has exposure to Apple. And also psychologically to see Apple still doing well would be a positive for the psychology of the market. If you saw Apple beginning to struggle and there was not a good reason for it or really was something showing that the economy was really slowing down, then that could you know, wake investors up and spook the market a little bit. So not that I want to say that uh, companies are super, super important or a single stock is really, really important. I do think Apple is in a unique position right now that it does carry a lot of weight with the mood of the market and then also with the way indexes are weighted and everything, uh, the price of it can impact it as well. So that'll be a big one. I uh, have no idea what to expect. That's not my job to predict, but just something to put out there is uh, to mark your calendar. And then we have a little bit of sad news. You know, I'm getting to the age now where people you grew up with on TV and watching begin to pass away. Uh, Jerry Springer passed away this week, as I'm sure you know. Um, I remember when the show first started to become what Jerry Springer was known for, the, the wild people coming on, and, and then every episode was just the same thing. But I remember watching that in the summers and the afternoons. Not a whole lot of it, but enough to, to, to learn a little bit as a younger individual. So um, just getting to that point where unfortunately we're going to see more and more of that. And just I uh, thought I would shout out Jerry Springer as, as we bring this to a conclusion. So with that, that's everything for this week's Bookly Mixtape. I told you there were a lot of things to really hit on. Um, hope you had a great weekend and remind you that every day I write a daily note. This is uh, it's separate from the mixtape. It's separate from Borrowless Wealth, but I think it all ties together. If you go to my website, justincastelli.io, and you go to the top, there is a link for something I'm calling the daily notes. Every day I write a daily note. It is tied somewhat to the connection of spirit, mind, body, and money, and a little bit of creativity in there along with the authentic life. Short notes I write every morning. Really cool process if you haven't heard me talk about it before. Every night in my notebook, I'll plan a little bit about what I think I'm going to write. I go to bed and I wake up. Um, I do my morning routine and then I get Leo ready, get him on the bus. And then there's about a 30 to 45 minute window between Leo getting on the bus and having to help get uh, Silas and Roman ready for the day. In that period of time, I write my daily note. Um, they're not very long, but I don't know what I'm going to write till I sit down. And it's almost as if that message for that day comes to me and I just translate it out. So in the past, you know, I've been creating content for a very long time. You know, I think about what I want to do and it's very intense and it's kind of a hot lot of pressure. I go to bed every night with no anxiety about what am I going to write the next day and I'm 120 days in. So if you're interested in seeing how all of this financial talk uh, plays into taking care of yourself and the connection to your spirit, mind, and body and how that helps out with money, you might want to give it a try. Check it out. You can subscribe via email. Um, you can do that through the link on my personal website. Again, Justin Costelli, my name, dot IO. 
um, and that is the replacing the dot com. So justincaselli.io, only two leaks up top, the daily notes and the On Our Pursuit podcast. Check that out um, and give me some feedback and let me know if you like it. Uh, I've really been enjoying it and I've been writing the notes mainly serving as a reminder to me first and to get some of my thoughts out and then just sharing it in case it resonates with you. So um, been a lot of fun and hope you enjoy that. With that, I will shut up. I will let you get to your week. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode.